what are the talking points that you think, to the extent that the the Republicans were like, you know, we've seen, and we'll we'll show a tweet that that people are complaining that Harris does not have uh, any kids of her own. She's a stepmom. Right. She's a spinster. Um, uh, the um, uh, what what other what other talking points do you think that they're going to do? Like, do they? Ha- it seems to me if I was the Republicans about two months after mm-hmm. the debate, at the least, but maybe even two months ago, I would have just put it in, in, in you know, in a shelf. Here's the narrative that we would build on uh, Kamala Harris. What What is the narrative going to be? Uh, they have a few. So uh, I was talking to Trump people about about their oppo on her, and it's a lot. And it's a combination of she was bad when she was running for president and she's bad for different reasons as Joe Biden's vice president. So running for president, uh, she was endorsing a bunch of progressive ideas halfway. Uh, and I, I luckily I'm, I'm diseased. So I remember all these fights in 2019. There was forgotten, but you know, yeah. Medicare for all, she came right. out for it. And then she wasn't willing to defend uh, the idea of, of, phasing out private insurance. So she waffled, uh, abolishing ice. She had a waffling statement about how we should restructure ice, uh, 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 defunding the police. She had a waffling statement there. She did support when LA, uh, the city of LA reduced the police funding budget to increase social spending. And I, I was living in LA right after that for two and a half years. That was not very popular that if, if you made her own that it's not very popular, but they're combining that with, and she was the quote unquote borders are, and inflation was her fault. She was there for all the failed Biden things because we're still not sure how much of angst about Biden is, is age and how much is anger with him. We're, the reason we're not sure is because 2022 happened and there's lots of voters who went to the polls and said, I have a negative opinion of Joe Biden. I think he's doing a bad job. The country's in the wrong track. I'm going to go vote for Josh Shapiro and Gretchen Whitmer and uh, all the Democrats I can because I don't like the Republicans like that. They're not sure where that, where that Delta is. Uh, but that was, those are the, those are the arguments they're combining. The, the, the stranger arguments I've seen them. Oh, hold on. I sure would just want to like yeah. comment on those because sure, sure. those seem like they're geared to peel off the, like the left in a way that it didn't seem to, I mean, it's not like Biden was, Biden maybe not have waffled on any of those positions because he came out against, he came out on the wrong yes. side of all those when he ran in 2020. So like, who is that supposed to resonate with? I mean, it, it, look, there are plenty of things that I have issue with Kamala Harris about, um, mm-hmm. but I'm going to vote for her over Donald Trump. I mean, uh, you know, speaking as if I was in a, a swing state in particular, but maybe just in general at this point, but I mean, who is that supposed to resonate with? Because I don't think that's going to work. I don't know because it is. Yeah, it's it's more of a thinker uh, that uh, that she's. She, you can blame her for everything bad that ha- that happened under Biden, and and she deserves personal responsibility. Uh, none of the good. And, and the argument by Democrats of kind of pivoting from what you were asking to what Democrats are saying is. There's just stuff that Biden couldn't talk about for the same reason he had a bad debate. He couldn't really explain. Uh, as he tried to, yes, the whole world had inflation and we're actually beating it and interest rates are coming, are going to come down, says the Fed. She can explain that. She hasn't been in the position to do it yet. I, I do hear a lot of optimism because the last 24 days were very tense and she was on stage in big settings with hundreds of reporters there, like the Essence Fest, and she did not screw up. She she delivered the administration's message. It was in a, con- a context where most reporters were like, eh, all right, whatever, please get to the part about Biden. <laughs> but she was just doing normal Democratic messaging for 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 three weeks. And they that made them pretty happy. Um, but, yeah, for Republicans, they 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 are going to run against her the way they're running against Biden uh, and and assuming that because she flipped from some stuff in 2019, 20, that you can portray her as a much more left-wing candidate. So yeah, you don't like, if you don't like Biden, it's going to be under even worse under her. She's a California Democrat. She's been waiting behind the scenes to drive us even further to the left. She used pronouns in a meeting once. I'm that one I have seen where I've there was seen a that where she also yeah. said, I'm wearing a blue suit, which because she was with blind people. Yeah. Cause she was with blind people. I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. so <laughs> she's so woke. Yeah, <laughs> she's like, I mean, you know, like actually like uh, being conscious of the fact that uh, there are people who have 
uh, different challenges in the room with her. That is just, uh, but I mean, okay, but here's my thing. It's like those people who are going to respond to that, at, like I've seen that already. The people mm -hmm. who are going to, and I think Elon Musk was pushing it, I think, actually, now that I think about it, I think that's where I saw it. Um, are they the ones who are like, um, I was going to vote for Biden, but now that I see that she actually recognizes that some people are blind, I'm not going to like, I, Oh, just, just fill in the gaps for people that she is a California lefty who, you know, shops at air and, uh, uses pronouns when, when she's writing memos, that, that sort of argument is going to be part of it. Uh, the cat lady thing, uh, that, that you, you referred to before, I, so that came from J.D. Vance in particular. J.D. Vance has been on uh, on a riff for years that uh, the problem one problem with the left is that they don't have they don't have children. They don't have a stake in the future. Uh, and the she's a great example because she never had kids. She got married later in life to somebody who had kids already. Uh, I've seen other conservatives make that argument. The counterpoint is always George Washington. He didn't have kids, but they're trying to say that she is part of this global agenda to destroy the West. And I'm not like being sarcastic when I say it. No, this, this is yeah. one of the ideas is they're trying to mainstream transgenderism and LGBT yep. and, and alternative lifestyles because they want to do, they want to destroy Americans and replace them with the third world. That is, that's behind that, um, that rhetoric basically. Dave, and Dave, I don't think that's I'm yeah, begging in coffee them. shops. They're not talking about, but that's the rhetoric. Yeah. I'm begging them to Go run ahead. on basically uh, the 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 Democrats have a, a gender bending agenda uh, run on trans kids again. That worked out so well in 2022. And then also give uh, Kamala Harris an opening to talk about her reproductive health and her choices not to have mm -hmm. biological children here. Yeah, this was from this. A uh, guy who I guess works for the uh, the, the Federalist Society. Uh, he's a Project Twenty Twenty Five guy. Project. Yeah. Uh, uh, this Will Chamberlain. Really yeah, yeah. Really simple, under discussed reason why Kamala Harris shouldn't be president. No children. Just, I mean, this is like it literally is just in. Here you go. Here is how you can talk about abortion in a way that's personal and uh, private to you, and how you can expand it out and make the issue of the election the issue that's personal to Kamala Harris on a silver platter gifted by the Republicans, if they go down that road. Yeah, uh, I think that is fraught because it would be, it's the opposite of the moment in the debate where, uh, where Biden was talking about, about healthcare and brought it back to immigration. The opposite of that would be, <laughs> we're winning this. Let me bring this back to abortion rights and women's reproductive health. Cause she's very comfortable talking about that. Uh, and, you know, everyone knows somebody who I, th I think everyone knows somebody who got married later in life or didn't have kids or tried to have kids. It didn't happen. Uh, you don't usually bring it up. It's it's kind of a rude thing to talk about. So I, I, if that's front of mind. But there's other stuff. There's um, I saw uh, MAGA guys talking about how, uh, you know, her what was her love life? Like, who did she who did she sleep with that helped? Her oh, well, career? that's that Willie Brown I've thing. They're, they're the doing Brown that from thing. the mayor. I mean, see, but th this is I'm yeah. curious if you've noticed this, because the Willie Brown thing is actually um a very much yeah. racially coded and also dei right because their argument is she got to be whatever it was da or attorney general because she slept with willie brown so she's not qualified for anything and she's not and the reason why she's there is because she's a dei hire and i'm curious as to like mm -hmm. how much the republicans are sensitive to the the dangers for them in going there and whether they're going to be able to stop like a lot of their i mean because the stuff that's going to get clicks and yeah. you know which represents a huge portion of their messaging machine it seems to me from my experience uh is going to go there they're going to try not to for like a half a day but then they're going to go there because that's where they go uh, yeah, I, I don't know if you'd be hearing that from Trump. That's why I cite Vance doing the cat lady thing, because he's done this against her and AOC and a couple other Democrats, Pete Buttigieg, uh, who has adopted children. Um, so that's in the mainstream. The uh, It is not beyond Trump's uh, ability to, to, to do this stuff. He did it with Kamala, sorry, with um, Nikki Haley at the very end of the South Carolina primary. He did go very far. But yeah, 
you know Trump. He will he will every couple months some reporter writes, This is a new Trump, and he's changed his tone, and then he goes on stage and says something that no one no other candidate I'm not would say because it that might backfire. With Willie yeah. Brown just <laughs> exactly. to get ahead. But some people are saying that, but I wouldn't yeah, yeah, yeah. say that. Well, and, and Brown, yeah, Brown has been, so he's still alive. He's, he's, he's very, he's in, I believe he might be over 90 at this point. And he's been a little bit dismissive of her, except he's called her ruthless. He's one, he's a guy that reporters go to, to get, okay, you knew, you knew Harris when she was rising in San Francisco politics, you gave her a, 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 a sort of job that tied her, you know, tied her, tied her over before she got elected. Um, and he's not been attacked. He's not attacked her, but I, I, I don't know how many people are going to care about that because if you go to people's personal lives and who they slept with, Trump is very vulnerable on that. Why, yes. why give another, why do you another example to bring that up? Dad? Yeah. What are you talking why, about? They've really, I mean, well, they've, they've got like men in black flashed everybody away from uh, the Gene Carroll thing. No one talks about it. So how much yeah. do you want to talk about how she came up? And they also the argument that she's just incompetent and, and, uh, it was hired for her race. They say that on the record. Uh, I got quotes saying that at the RNC, they will say, cause it's not entirely wrong. When, when Biden was choosing his running mate, he said he wanted a woman. The fact that she was a black woman was helpful. Absolutely. She in that job. Like if Stephen Miller wanted to sue and say it was affirmative action, like I'm sure some judge at the fifth circuit would, pick, would take it up uh, because he said, yes, I want a woman. I want one for this job, not, not a man. Um, but before that, <laughs> she had to win a bunch of elections and, what what some Democrats see as the tragedy of Harris is that uh, she had a great brand until she started running for president, which was I'm in San Francisco, so I'm not conservative, but I'm a tough on, on crime prosecutor. And she happened to run in a cycle where that was unpopular and she ameliorated it a little bit. She pro again went probably too far on on uh, supporting cutting police funds. But that's now a popular idea. And they, they really think, is there is there some way to reboot? Um, the Kamala image where people hear about how, yeah, if you're concerned about crazy liberals, letting uh, people just commit crime in the streets, that wasn't her. She, she fixed that. Um, I don't know how that's going to play. Cause I've heard Republicans, I've mean, not heard anything worry about that. I've heard some of them speculate. They might um, attack her on that basis. The way that remember in, there was a week in 2020 where they were running ads that both said Joe Biden put too many black men in prison and Joe Biden will defund the police. Right. They might try that. It didn't work very well, but they might try mm -hmm. that again uh, with her because the, that old image is pretty good. Whatever you thought, I mean, I'm not trying to be glib. If, if you were, if you're marching in 2020 and you resent uh, that she called herself a, a, a top cop, that does, that didn't get any better over the years, but for the swing voter who needs to be convinced, um, Hey, or be, or told, frankly, uh, that the, the Biden administration spent a bunch more money on community policing, which they all want to talk about. Um, I was talking to the mayor of Milwaukee at the convention as Democrat. He's like, yes, we really want to talk about how they, we have more police funding because of Joe Biden. It'd be great. Um, yeah, she can do that. It just, what, what, how does she reintroduce herself? That is being done right now. Uh, it, it's not entirely up to her. It's what, what does she say that gets quoted, which, which conservative talking points pierce the veil and get covered. Um, what are you hearing about vice president? Like, um, I mean, oh yeah, there seems to be, I don't know, eight names out there, but, but do you have a sense of let, before we get into the names, do you have a sense of the profile that people want? Mm -hmm. Like now I know if she picks Andy Bashir or Roy Cooper, people mm -hmm. are going to say DEI, you're just going for no. a white guy from, you that know, is, yeah, that is the flip. I'm laughing. I'm laughing. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm laughing because that that's that's it's the exact opposite of 2020. I think. And this was when Hillary was choosing her running. And I'm mate, sure that, I'm well, sure that will follow yeah. them for the rest of their careers, that they were considered because they were a white guy, uh, you know, from like a, from a from a southern or a, or a swing state. I'm sure that I'm sure that will yeah, haunt yeah. them for the rest of their careers. Yeah, I, I don't think people will care that much what they get what democrat no, really what democrats game. get no I, I i on that yeah i know uh, i i'm taking it too literally but what's going to happen with their their running mate people will be introduced to this running mate and they'll be the most obscure vice presidential candidate uh in a long time especially compared to vance who was famous was a celebrity before he got into politics his book is sold at least 1.6 million copies, Netflix movie, etc. She's not going to have a running mate who's in a Netflix movie, so it'll be who is this other person? Uh, 
that that's on the ticket. And it will probably be one of these. So I've heard you heard the same. Everyone's heard the same things. It's kind of a loop now. Uh, Roy Cooper in North Carolina and Andy, Andy Bashir in Kentucky, Josh Shapiro in Pennsylvania are the are the top choices. There are some Democrats Mark pushing Kelly? Mark Kelly in Arizona. Um, and both both Kelly and Shapiro, you can tell a story because Shapiro is the governor of Pennsylvania. You can talk about the shooting. Uh, Kelly's wife survived. Uh, Gabby Gibbs survived a, a shooting. Um, it's still with us, even though people reported her dead. It's a miraculous story. Um, both. So all four of these people, there are some there's not really there's, it's not like um, when Obama was thinking of taking Evan by out of the Senate uh, and giving Republicans a Senate See, All of them would be replaced by Democrats. Uh, the the only complications would be there'd be a special Senate election in 2026 in Arizona instead of 2028. Because he he says it's it's every two years yeah. if you if your the term's not over, uh, and in 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 North Carolina when when Roy Cooper's out of the state, the governor is going to be Mark Robinson, the Republican candidate for governor. I've heard some Republicans who sorry some Democrats who like that because they want more attention on Mark Robinson because they think anyone who sees him is going to be offended by him. Um, and for for funny enough in Kentucky, it's 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 Bashir who has the least to lose because he um, he he is the governor of a supermajority Republican legislature, he has a lieutenant governor who's a Democrat, should take over. Not a big deal, uh, frankly, in Kentucky. Uh, for Shapiro, it's that Re- Republicans run the state Senate. Uh, there are new maps. They still control the state Senate. And if he was chosen, then there'd be an election. So we don't know who'd be in the, in the state Senate in, in Pennsylvania next year. But theoretically, it's before the lieutenant governor, it's the Republican state Senate president who'd be Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania. I bring this up to be comprehensive. None of this is like a deal breaker for any Democrat. <laughs> they're all they're all in a good position. Again, it's not like 2016 when they really had uh, pretty thin choices of who to, of who to pick. And and Kane rose to the top in part because there was a Democratic governor of, of Virginia and he could replace them. Like they, they have a much broader field now. People who they're very confident can go on TV, be introduced, be, be pretty popular pretty fast. Is, well, it are, seems are we... like well, just just for for Mark Kelly, uh, he's one of the only Democrats in the Senate who hasn't endorsed the PRO Act, and I know she's yeah. personal friends with with Kelly, but that seems to be the least intuitive for me. Uh, if they want to shore up labor support, I feel like hope. I think yeah. she was she's going to go all in on youth or future focused politics and go with Bashir, who's young and charismatic and can talk to JD Vance, being from the same area yeah she's the same age i think almost exactly as kelly and uh that's fixable uh, so again i mentioned tim kane everyone's most memorable <laughs> running mate uh but when he was chosen he kind of had to walk back some of his abortion stances which he'd held his whole life and i i imagine that would happen with kelly because i was checking with labor last night and every every labor i've not found a labor union yet that endorsed biden but won't endorse harris but why risk it um, that's the only, I'm glad you brought up that ideological contrast. It's kind of the only one because everyone else is in the mix there because Whitmer has taken herself out. Doesn't mean she won't get it, but she's not in the mix right now. Um, she has a trifecta. She's passed a lot of stuff. The other people in this mix have not operated in, in, in a trifecta. They've been Repub- democratic governors of states who Republicans run a lot of stuff and they've done, this always happens because swing voters like it when things don't really happen. Uh, they're all pretty popular, and not all of them have just worked with Republicans and gotten a few big deals. Roy Cooper got Medicaid expansion, which he's very comfortable talking about. Um, uh, Shapiro and Bashir have had to fight with a legislature that overrides them. Mm-hmm. And Bashir, I think, twice on abortion and trans issues. Just they keep over over overriding his veto. Uh, in in Shapiro, it's still, they'll, they won't pass the bill he wants in the house, uh, out of after it gets in the house. So they haven't really had big ideological tests. The the other exception I'd add is that Shapiro is very is you know Jewish and very pro Israel, very critical of um, very critical of Gaza protests when they were happening at the University of Pennsylvania, which I imagine Democrats don't want to talk about forever. Uh, but that's the only static I've seen from these people with with her. How much? Uh... <clears throat> I imagine there there's a couple of like competing sort of I, I, ideas in terms of what qualifies for a vice presidential c- pick. I'm talking not so much in terms of like uh, in terms of profile, right? Like um, the the argument for Kelly and for Shapiro is if you can get a point or two from their respective states, 
uh, where they're both popular, then, you know, those are two states that are going to be pretty important to the nominee. I guess you get a better sense of that. Like it suggests to me that that there, you know, if that's a consideration, which I would imagine it has to be at least one consideration, they're not going to make this pick for a couple of weeks until they see like what the polling shows where Harris is at. Yeah. What about a guy like, well, and Pritzker would not, you know, I mean, Illinois, I think they're, 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 they're feeling pretty comfortable. Um, but what about like, uh, what about like a Pritzker or like even like a, like a Murphy in Connecticut where Pritzker might be able to bring, I, I don't know uh, what unique from those other guys, but Murphy, if there's some question about trying to find like a, you know, a Joe Biden figure insofar as you're talking about foreign policy. Um, that may be it. I don't know. Have you heard any of those other names? Have you heard any other names outside of like governors? I'm just curious as to whether there's a notion of someone coming in and being like, well, I'm foreign policy type of, I mean, I assume it's not going to be Menendez. No, I haven't heard him. Uh, no, I, 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 I literally haven't heard anyone from the Senate, uh, I, and, and, except for Kelly. And I don't, I don't know why exactly, but it, it, they are trying to build a, a story here. And it's, it's the vice president who's ready for the job with somebody who's governed outside, outside DC and um, has a, has a big family and a, and a good story. To, it, it, I keep saying the word story, but that's part of this. Uh, I've heard more about these, these, this, this set of governors and Kelly than I have any, I've not heard anything about the other guys, but you're right. They're not. So the hurry that they're in is the DNC's virtual nomination process, which they have kind of put on ice and they're going to revisit later. They wanted to do this, uh, in early August before the convention, they now are probably going to wait for the convention because there's not really a problem doing that. So wait a they second. have until, I thought that was yeah. not true. That is not what Jamie. Oh, uh, it's Harrison so stupid. Oh, come it's, on. It's, it's so dumb. Dude, you're not telling me this was all a ruse. <laughs> it mostly was so, like, this is very wheezy, but you guys have already talked about it, but yeah, they, they wanted because Ohio originally had a late dead, uh, early deadline. Uh, they said, okay, well to screw it, we're to make sure Ohio can't screw us over. We're going to have a virtual vote. And then Ohio changed the deadline and their position was we're still going to have a virtual vote because who knows, Ohio could double cross us and change it back to the early deadline. And then the new t the Biden's not in the ballot. Um, not really an issue right now. Uh, the only people I've seen talking about suing are uh, Republican, not not candidates, but conservative lawyers who are going to find some way to maybe sue and say, oh, she can't use all the campaign's funds, um, which won't go anywhere because the FEC never does anything. Right. Uh, I've not heard that seriously. Who well, it was guys? it was very self-serving stuff by Democrats who didn't who just wanted this over with yeah, and didn't who, think that Biden would drop out. Matt, who are those two guys? Uh, who who are the who are those those two guys? Jacob Wall. What, who is what? Jacob Wall who, and Jack Berkman. Oh uh, uh, yeah, Berkman. Are those guys going to sue? Are they still? Are they in jail? Uh. I don't think they're, they might be out of jail, but I'm not sure if they're in a good position to sue. Yeah, they're probably not. Uh, yeah. That would be my guess. Um, all right. Well, interesting. Um, is there any, I mean, is there anything else uh, you think that we've left on the table here? No. Uh, <laughs> so much is not figured out yet. So the, even the the Harris messaging, uh, the anti-Harris messaging is is all over the place. And there's not one theme yet. There's not one video meme yet. Um, I did during the convention. I mean, Charlie Kirk was actually the person I talked to who was most worried about this, that uh, good convention in his view, but they were not doing enough to use their net free national media to attack Harris. It was just they videos of. Uh, uh, there's a, yeah. you need to save that time to praise um, uh, Trump. <laughs> he's, he's 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 Messiah plus. I mean, that takes a lot of time. Well, I was Kevin. Even if you were in the room, uh, or if you're watching C-SPAN and saw their videos, they had these videos of Biden falling down. They had a whole presentation about how he wasn't um, he wasn't uh, serious serious enough uh, with the Afghan family. Sorry, fa families of people of, of servicemen members killed in Afghanistan. They had very Biden specific stuff, and I was waiting. Hey, maybe there'd be some sort of meme. Uh, Harris video they cycle in it didn't really happen they just they just no. kind of ignored her and they said we'll deal with her if we have to um, but I honestly again the, apart from Trump's speech which rambled and I, I saw 
members of like, I saw like Byron Donalds walking out halfway through. Like but a part of that speech being kind of a dud, it just it just they didn't really get they had a good convention. They had everyone on message. They were they were unified. Everyone agreed that Trump was amazing. And then this happened. So they, they were sort of in denial that they'd have to do it. That's awesome. I love that. Hey, folks, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and check out our daily show. We do it every day at 12 p.m. Eastern for about two and a half hours. We even take phone calls. You should check that out.